guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review and today's game up on the tabletop is called Tail Story where you're going to be playing as one of several different types of animals attempting and competing in wacky events. Uh, this game is kind of a deck builder slash deconstructioner. It's kind of an interesting deck builder because you're going to start with a certain number of cards, you're going to be wearing them out and exchanging them with other players cards and trying to run through your deck multiple times in order to win this game. It plays two to four players, ages 12 and up, and takes about 20 to 45 minutes depending on the number of players. It has a couple of different variants, it has some extra cards that can be added, a little bit of an NS FW deck as well, and you can kind of mix and match how you want to play this wacky style deck slash builder slash reconstruction or game. And I will show you what it looks like down below, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss what I think about it. All right, so you ready to unleash your inner pet and do weird things for victory? Well, this is Tail Story, and this is a prototype copy, so I imagine it will probably be looking a little different when you guys get it when it is fully produced. Regardless of the cards are very beautiful and you can probably tell that they're very very shiny which is also pretty cool as well now how it works is you're going to take 15 random cards from the play deck and this is the deck of cards you're going to be getting which totals all of these guys here you're going to go ahead and shuffle them all up and deal each player 15 cards if you're playing with more than Two, oh, two, uh, if you're playing with less than four players, you will then have extra cards, which means you'll go ahead and set those extra cards aside and you will not be using them. There's also a not safe for work deck. If you don't want to play with that specific deck for whatever reason, then you can also set that one aside. I have five cards, which I'll be showing you out here just as an example. And then I've got these beautiful player aids, which each player will get. And then you have these things here, which are called cue cards, which determine which play and the play order of the players. So as you can see here, we went ahead and put this player as the first player and this player as the second player. They each chose a character. This one here is playing as Ham and Cheese, the hamsters. And this one over here is playing as Khalid, the Sphinx cat. Go ahead and place your characters on your character card space and your deck of 50 15 cards, make sure it's nice and shuffled, and place it on your setup slash deck space of the board. The objective of this game is to get up to the fourth achievement. Achievement 1 lets you transform or alter your character, flipping it over like that. The next achievement says every player's character becomes altered regardless of if they've actually made it past the first achievement. The third one has your hand limited by one, and then the fourth one is you win the game. And the way you get the achievements is by playing your entire deck into the discard pile. If you were to draw and you can't, you're simply going to then follow a set of rules, and it tells you specifically on this how it works. At the end of the turn, you can end your turn by discarding cards in your hand down to the number of your hand limit, but before that, you can check your deck and if you have zero cards you can make an achievement and it is your play step again and by making achievement you discard a card from your hand putting it face down here and continuing the game now when you're playing the game you're going to go ahead and simply draw five cards so i'll show you a turn one two three four and five and then you're going to play a certain number of actions. And on your opposite side of this achievement card here, it will tell you what you can do by spending two action points. The first one is you can play an action card and it will tell you what your action cards cost is in the top left hand corner. Some might cost zero, some might cost one. So you'll go ahead and play one down on your side of the board. Now this one here will say stop and bribe. And this one of course is going to stop other card effects. So you shouldn't use that. It's usually used on somebody else's turn uh, but you have these cards here which will let you recycle putting cards back into your hand from your discard pile um, and then there's other effects as well maybe you want to draw from your deck steal or bury cards and as well as using your own ability on your little hamster here this one says if you successfully play a card that has this specific symbol so if you look at the cards here they're all going to have a unique symbol on them when you do that twice a turn you can dig one which lets you discard a card from the top of your deck into your discard pile which is the objective of the game it's very very useful but if you don't want to use this ability here or play any of the cards in your hand you have a couple other options you can instead for a zero action points once per round once per turn swap one to two cards in your discard pile with the same number of cards in another player's discard pile of your choice and then the other one is you can draw a card 
and then discard a card if you have nothing else to do or can't. And in that specific action phase, uh, there was not a whole lot I could do because of the whole recycling, so I could have just done that instead. So maybe I don't want to play a recycle card. I can simply draw a card, I can then discard a card, and I can do that one more time. So that might actually be a better play. So I can have these stop and super stop bribes. I can use these to hurt my opponent. And after that, I would basically end my turn. I would check to see after every action if my deck has been run out and if I had actually made an achievement. And if not, I would move on to my next player here. So let's go ahead and just talk about this. If this happens in the discard area, basically you're gonna go ahead and shuffle this deck back up. You're going to go ahead and oop, draw five cards again. And you're going to basically be picking one of those cards and placing it here, forming your achievement and flipping over your character card here. And your character card is going to have the, the, the main ability on it as well as an altered use, which will allow you to do something special either once per game or twice per game or even potentially even a passive that continues throughout the game. But your deck is now shortened by less cards for having this achievement made by basically discarding your entire deck and then replacing it. As well as, of course, you're going to be attempting to switch cards around. Like I said before, drawing cards is very, very useful and having the option to draw one or two is nice. Uh, as well as stealing cards from a player's hand and burying cards. And you can choose, do I want to steal one or two cards? Do I want to bury zero, one, or two cards? And you can kind of manipulate how many cards are in your deck and how many are in your opponent's decks, which is also nice as well as recycling cards. Maybe you're happy about a card you just played. Maybe you want to get that drawback. Playing that recycle card is going to allow you to take that card back into your hand. Except recycle cards don't let you get other recycle cards or stop cards because that's basically cheating, so you can't do that in the game. But regardless, it's a very simple and easy to play game. Just trying to get through your deck, playing your actions, screwing over your opponents, and creating the best possible deck for yourself while getting as many achievements as you possibly can. Because you want to improve your character standing. There's also unique special cards in the deck that will have higher amounts of actions than normal, but they will perform a very special ability that will let you draw even up to six cards at the cost of well, it's a great cost as well as a great requirement, but I won't spoil that for you. Overall, that's pretty much how you play the game Tail Story. It plays up to four players, and if the case where you're playing more than uh, two players, you're just simply going to be able to have more targets on the board, and players are going to be going a little bit more crazy than in a two-player game, but not too much. This plays very similar to three and four players. So let's come up and talk about it. This game involves the players attempting to create the best deck for themselves as possible. They're trying to run the deck out as quickly as they can using the best strategies that they have based on their character and what starts in their deck. Now you're going to be fully changing and formatting your deck to make the best possible combination of cards to basically run through as fast as you possibly can. And there is a lot of strategy in that. When I first saw this game and I was looking at the cards and I went, oh, okay, fairly simple. There's recycle, there's a stop bribe, you, you have digs, and then you've got a couple other different types of steals, berries. Like, for the most part, you're going to be drawing from the deck, switching cards from certain areas, just stealing cards and dropping cards, and then your animal unique ability. But how you utilize them and what cards you gain is going to change your strategy in the game. And of course, for your animal, it is also very important because your animal is going to basically give you an, a bonus for the cards that you play, provided that they function with your animal. And when you play with more players, obviously there's going to be more customization for your deck, which is what I would strongly recommend for this game. The artwork is really, really good. This has some really top-notch quality artwork. It's very funny. It's very cute. And and they're all foily, which is very interesting. I never thought I'd actually see that when the game came by, but it definitely provides a unique perspective and style to the game. I personally really like this artwork, and I think that most people will as well. It's very, very family friendly, but there is a not safe for work version. And even still, that's pretty funny as well. I can probably share those. They just have a lot of puns and sexual innuendo type things in them. But for the most part, the game works for everybody. The game is very, very simple to learn and easy to play. And once you gather the basic key terms and a couple unique rules as to uh, certain characters and their special ultimate abilities, you'll understand how to play rather quickly. For those of you who like games like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering and those such sort of trading style card games, this one here has similar, similar features, but it's also unique in the sense that you're just playing one-offs of the game and you're going to be switching around through a full deck of cards 
chance to change your play structure, your decks, and of course the ability is going to be it's all in one singular box. I really personally enjoy this game. Now, there are a couple little things that I suppose people might want to consider when picking this game up. If you don't want the not safe for work thing, that's probably something you should probably avoid. The game is rather uh, complex in nature. If you have somebody who's very, very good at determining like values and, and numbers in their head and what the best possible turn can be, it's very likely they're going to come out ahead in this style of a game because they're gonna know what's best to pick up. So experience over time is going to give you a high advantage in the game, which is both a positive and a negative for newer players. But it's a good game to start with, especially because it's not necessarily just a take that style game, which is very, very common in the type of games I get that look like this one. This one has some unique strategies and styles and choices of play, which is really cool as well. If you don't like foily cards for some reason, if you want something that's even more complex as far as the different types of keywords go, but for the most part, I think people are going to dig this. If you like a family friendly style card game, it's a little bit of a deck builder, a little bit of a deck deconstruction game that has a little bit of cute furry fuzzy animals. They got the cats, you got the dogs, you got the hamsters and gerbils and all that. And they all have their own unique factions that are all simple and easy to understand and play. You're going to dig this game. This is a game I will probably be playing on my live stream just because I think it works really well with an interactive audience. People can see how you're going to be con constructing and transforming your deck and they're going to be more interested and engaged with this game. I don't know if it came across what I was showing you down below exactly how uh, you might feel about the game because there is so much unique strategy that is hard to explain unless you're actually going through the game but i really really like tale story and i'm pretty sure you guys you card gamers out there will as well take a look down below link in the description thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board or card game review if you want to check this out like i said before links down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick the game up currently on kickstarter dante i have an important question for you dante you want to play is Jack the Beagle or do you want to play as Alan the Greyhound? Which one? You don't know? How about this one? It's majestic. It's just like you. Okay, maybe Dante won't play as any of them. He's like, I don't want to play as any of them. I just want to go. I want to go eat treats. Treats! Yeah, treats. Alright, as well as check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one down below. Tonight's game is Yahar! It's Wednesday today, which I don't know if this will come out on Wednesday. I think it will. I think it's coming out on Wednesday, or next Wednesday. I don't know. Regardless, though, we will play playing games, and you should join us. Patreon, live stream, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to doing a critter battle with you. Tell him, Dante. Next time. Wow, you're so good, Dante. You're so good and lively. Yeah. <laughs>